I am Dr. Anil Agrawal. And I am Dr. Ravish Shah. Anemia is a frequent comorbidity in patients with heart failure. The true frequency of anemia in heart failure is not only influenced by the definition used, but it also depends on patient population that is being studied. Unfortunately, the precise cutoff to define anemia in patients with heart failure remains arbitrary and there are no consensus in regards to the definition. Furthermore, the threshold hemoglobin level at which anemia treatment should be initiated in patients with heart failure remains a further uh, complex and controversial clinical question. Optimal method of treating anemia in patients with heart failure with iron therapy or erythropoiesis stimulating agent is also unclear. Our article tries to discuss these complexities related to anemia in patients with heart failure. The article discusses mechanisms involved in the development of anemia in heart failure. A complex interaction of underlying iron deficiency, defective EPO production, EPO resistance, activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system, along with presence of underlying chronic kidney disease and pro-inflammatory cytokine activation are some of the reasons. Advanced age, female gender, and presence of CKD often predispose to anemia. Iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disease are two most common causes of anemia in heart failure patients. Iron deficiency is diagnosed when serum iron, transferrin saturation, and ferritin are low, and iron binding capacity is elevated. Anemia of chronic disease in heart failure is diagnosed when concentrations of iron transferrin saturation and iron binding capacity are low, and ferritin as well as transferrin receptor labels are elevated. However, these criteria are not always accurate. Once considered a complication of heart failure, anemia is now emerging as a potential contributor and a therapeutic target in patients with heart failure. The potential benefit of treating anemia in heart failure patient includes improvement in the oxygen uh, delivery to the tissues, improvement in exercise tolerance, attenuation of adverse cardiac remodeling, and potential improvement in health-related quality of life. Given the significant risk related to volume overload, blood transfusion is usually not the first-line therapy in patients with heart failure, except in those with severe symptomatic anemia. One may consider oral iron therapy, but gastrointestinal side effects are frequent and often resulting in poor compliance. In addition, large quantities of oral iron is required for extended period of time to replete the iron stores. Although therapy with intravenous iron has shown promising results in recent years, large-scale multicenter randomized control trials have not been done. Available studies have not reported consistent improvement in symptoms or quality of life with EPO or darbipoidin alpha therapy in heart failure patients. This may be partly due to unmasking of underlying functional iron deficiency with ESA therapy alone. Combination therapies may provide reasonable uh, solution, but multicenter randomized double-blind control trials are still lacking, particularly in elderly anemic patients with heart failure. Given the recent evidence linking ESA therapy to achieve high target level of hemoglobin in anemic patients with kidney disease to higher mortality and cardiovascular complications, it would be extremely important to be cautious in utilizing uh, this approach when treating patients with uh, anemia and heart failure. Whether newer ESA will have different outcomes remains to be explored in this population. Emerging therapies to counteract mediators of anemia in heart failure may alter the treatment of anemia in, uh, of heart failure in future. Thank you very much.